This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Darby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College, and my guest today is Tammy Christopher, who runs the Meriden Center of Middlesex Community College. And you've been running it for how long? Since the end of February of this year. Wow. Oh, last I, year, excuse I, me. I thought, you'd, I thought you'd been there forever. Feels like it some days, <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that attracted you to it in the first place? In particular, is the demographic of students that I would be working with. Um, in my previous positions, I had a lot of opportunities to work with underrepresented groups um, in the higher education world, um, single mothers, adult students who had been away from college for a while, um, people that have got, had uh, gotten off track from college in some way, and I know the community college system really serves those people. And you live in Merritt, don't I do. you? Yes, the commute was also a positive <laughs> for me. <laughs> so tell us about Meriden. What's, what's special about the city of Meriden? Meriden, I think, is really a hidden treasure, and you don't necessarily understand that until you've spent some time in the city. Um, growing up, I lived next to Meriden, a town over, but I had a lot of relatives that lived in Meriden, so I was able to see firsthand a lot of the resources it had um, as a child and a young adult and as an adult, a lot of park systems. Um, a lot of community events, but it's kept quiet, which is not always um, a benefit to our students in the population, but it's got a lot of things to Well, do. recently the mayor of Meriden uh, rented a bus. I guess he paid for it. Somebody paid. I know I didn't pay for it. I didn't it. pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and he took some of us at Middlesex Community College around the town, and I was amazed at the um, number of parks, the, mm -hmm. the nice uh, suburbs, uh, we had a good lunch. Should we tell people about the lunch we had? An excellent lunch. Yes. Uh, somewhere, I've forgotten where. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was terrific. Yeah. Uh, there's a spirit in Meriden, isn't there? There is. A lot of the community uh, participants, whether it be private citizens or public figures or business owners, are very involved in what's going on. Although it's a large yeah. city, we have um, a small town feel a lot of times. Which is great. Mm -hmm. So this is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, and we'll be back momentarily. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College, and my guest today is Tammy Christopher, who runs the Meriden Center of Middlesex Community College. And we've been talking about the joys of Meriden, which you describe as a, as a treasure. Yes. It's a medium-sized city, what, 60,000? About 65,000. 65,000. How many high schools? We have two public high schools, one technical school. Now, if someone who's, is listening and are worried about their house prices and, you know, thinking perhaps of making a move, why would they move to Meriden? It's, uh, as I had mentioned before, it's very community-centered um, community town. Um, the school systems are actually very active. Uh, superintendent, who's got a good history with the town, he's very involved in making bridges and um, community relationships with other organizations. In fact, he's teaching a course at. He is. He's teaching an early childhood us. education class for us in the spring. It's called Family School Relations. Basically, that class uh, helps parents and administrators work with students together, so that everyone's on the same page and working together for the benefit of the students. I, I really enjoy calling up superintendent of schools in the largest district, in the largest town in our service area, who was a, f a former mayor, and telling him that he's the most junior adjunct faculty member at Middlesex Community College, yes. and he roars with laughter. <laughs> uh, I assume we're paying him a little bit to just, teach that course, but not just a couple of dollars, not, not much. So tell me about the, about the Meriden Center. What kinds of students we have a there. range of students. Uh, most recently, we've noticed an influx of younger students that are right out of the high schools. Most of our students come from Meriden, but we're seeing an increase in students coming from um, more middle class type of towns, such as Southington. Um, we notice that the demographic of students really are interested in getting involved in the college, whether they're younger or older. Um, they're really interested in following their education. Uh, finding out what's going on with their grades and really have good um, relationships with their instructors. As they walk in the door, do they realize that many of their courses 
transfer very easily baccalaureate institutions? Some do and some don't. I think one of the things we're really working on in Meriden is reaching out to the students to let them know all of the opportunities they have starting at a community college, whether they decide to transfer to a four-year school using one of our partnership programs or meeting with the high school students that are just coming in and letting them know that some of their classes in high school might transfer in and they can get college credit for that or just making them aware of the other opportunities in our non-credit division as well. So do you have some students who just take one course and they're trying to figure out what it's like to be in college? Yes, and we actually give a lot of attention to those students. Um, They need the most support to helping them find their way. Um, We try to pair them up with a faculty member or a staff member or some other student that's been there for a while to make them feel more comfortable. And how large are your classes? We range from 19 to about 35 at the most, um, which is very small compared to a lot of other public institutions. Yeah, so it's not a class of 200 with a professor at the front and a mic and you never get to meet him. No, you get a lot of personal attention from your instructors, and all of the instructors that we have actually teach the classes. We don't have any teaching assistants. So everyone who's teaching is an experienced? Yes, experienced Uh, um, in terms of the education they receive, but also... A lot of our instructors have relevant work experience that they directly apply to the classroom teaching. So if I'm listening to you, Tammy, and I'm thinking, well, possibly I might like to go to college, but I'm not really, maybe I'm not serious about it yet, or maybe I'm not sure, or maybe I don't have the money, and are you open to talking to people like that? Anyone in my office is. All of our staff are very uh, aware that the student is our customer and we will do the best we can to help direct them into a path that's uh, most beneficial for so their wh- education. So where, where are you located? We are 55 West Main Street in downtown Meriden, across from the uh, courthouse complex. So you're right in the center? Right in the middle of downtown, plenty of parking, public transportation, right on the bus. So should a, should a person just walk in or should they give you a call ahead of time to tell you they're coming or what? Whatever works best, a call is always good so we can make sure we have appropriate time to talk with you. But if you want to walk in, um, we're open as early as 8.30 and we're there as late as 10 o'clock on most evenings. Wow. Mm-hmm. During well, when you say Yeah, when you say most evenings, you probably mean Monday through Thursday or Friday uh, as well? Monday through Friday, actually. We have classes until uh, 9.45 on Fridays. So somebody can be full-time employed uh, And still take a course? Yes, we have morning, afternoon, and evening classes. Some are two days a week, some are one day a week. It's a very flexible schedule. Do you have financial aid for people who are uh, not making much money or unemployed? We do. Actually, almost 80% of our students receive some type of financial aid. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. So uh, what does financial aid cover? Financial aid, depending on what form you get. Mm. uh, Most of our students have that receive financial aid, receive um, full tuition, and sometimes there's actually extra money left over for textbooks, um, transportation costs, child care costs while you're in school. And we so you're almost paying that. people to take courses. Yes, but they have Not to quite. do well. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do well. That's okay. That's okay. So if, if I'm out there and maybe I don't quite have a high school diploma, but I, I want to do something with my life, mm-hmm and I come talk with you, what kind of advice do you give me? That's a great point. We actually have a very close relationship with the adult education programs in Meriden. We work um, with both uh, ESL populations, uh, GED populations, and students that are finishing up in a night program. Um, We're very in in tune with what's going on with their curriculum. We um, bring the students in from adult education and we give them tours of the building. We also help them with the application process and with financial aid so they have that encouragement that they can keep going once they're done. And what's uh, what's the easiest course you, you offer? The easiest, easiest credit course. The credit course we offer uh, depends on the individual. I would say any That's a good topic, dip- diplomatic answer. Any topic that a student <clears throat> has um, an interest in as a hobby or um, something else of that nature seems to be easier for them because they're more interested in the subject matter. But uh, most of our classes these days are very interactive with video and audio and hands-on work. It's not your um, previous straight lecture with the instructor talking up front, students just taking notes. We just don't have classes like that anymore. So you you offer the standard English and math, I'm sure. Yes. 
English, what else? math, computer classes. Um, we have a very strong human services program for people that are interested in getting into counseling, um, working with adults or youth. We also have a very strong criminal justice program. Um, and we're really strong in providing support services to students who need to upgrade their math and English skills as well. A lot of tutoring on site and online. And as I mentioned before, the low student to instructor ratio really helps with that. Do you have any students who are still in high school, 11th, 12th graders? We do have some students that um, take classes as part of the CCP program. CCP, what's that? Yes, that is the oh, it just community college something. Yes, okay. uh, career college preparation of some sort. That the acronym keeps okay. changing. Uh, regardless, they take classes at their high school and they receive college credit for that. It's a relationship that the community colleges have worked out with various high schools. And do you have any high school kids who are full-time students, 11th or 12th graders, and who come to you for an evening class in addition to what they're doing? Not at this point. I think But they could. They could. They absolutely yeah. could. We don't have any in the Meriden Center at this time. Okay. Well, but anyone who's listening... Oh, sure. Uh, if they want to get a start on their college college work, whether they come to Middlesex Community College or not, mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, do you have some people who are taking courses both at the Meriden Center and at the main campus in Middletown? We do. Um, a lot of our students uh, take classes in both locations. It's, it's flexible in the way that they can pick and choose their schedule that way and um, get through their program as quickly as possible. We are on the bus line from Meriden to Middletown, so if transportation is a concern, that's helpful. And um, we do do carpooling with students. We have ride share boards. I, I was going to ask you about transportation. Is that a major issue for people? Usually not. Our day is covered pretty well with uh, bus transportation. Um, some of the later night classes, the 9.30 at night ending classes, um, depending on the day, it might be an issue. Okay. Now... At this point, how many students do you have total? We have about 610 students from our last semester. That's a lot. It is I a know lot. some whole colleges that have about six or 700 mm -hmm. students. And, and your goal is what in the next two or three years? Our goal is to grow so that we're comfortably uh, filling the facility that we have now while still maintaining a very high level of student services. We don't want to just increase our enrollment so much and not, um, make, not have the students get the support services they need. We really want our students to be successful. So describe the building a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's on Main Street. It's on Main Street. It's opposite the courthouse. Yes, it's actually quite a nice building. It's a five-floor uh, older building. Ten classrooms, two computer labs. We have a student resource room, student lounge, a vending area. We have a new allied health lab for our CNA students and uh, various other CNA. Classrooms. Sorry, certified nursing assistant. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, how long does that program take? So that program is about eight weeks long. It has clinical and lab and lecture components to it. And what, what kind of qualifications do I need to get in? You really just um, need your high school diploma. You talk with continuing education to see if there's anything additional. Um, but that's, that's a ground level uh, career based track. So that's a wonderful that. way to, to get started. Absolutely. And I, I've met some of the students, they're all ages. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, not quite as old as me, but they're <laughs> pretty much all ages. Well, how old would the youngest CNA student be? Oh, 18, just a graduate of high school, 18 up to about, I think we've had up to 60 in that program. So this is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Darby, and we'll be back momentarily. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Darby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College, and my guest today is Tammy Christopher, who runs the Meriden Center on Main Street, opposite the courthouse. Do I have it right? You do. 55 okay. West Main Street. 55 West Main Street. Lots of parking and lots of financial aid if you talk to Tammy Christopher. <laughs> uh, and you were just telling me off air that you're still registering for the spring semester? We are. Our classes begin January 21st, which is a Friday. Um, but we are registering now and we will be registering up to that date. But our classes do fill up, so if someone is interested, I would encourage them to give us a call. And we what's the num what's the number? Two zero three two three eight six two zero two. If you call us and give us just a little bit of background about um, your situation, then we can give you the best advice as to what steps you need to take to get started at school. 
So what you're basically saying is if anyone's interested in the spring semester, they'd better hustle over there. Yes. Call us soon, today. (laughs) (laughs) Or even better, yesterday. Well, uh, we've been talking about the Meriden Center, and you've been there since February of uh, 2010, Ten. almost yes. almost a year, not, almost. not quite. Uh, tell us about the job you had just before. Just before this, I was doing something similar, but for a private institution. I was the director of the Waterbury Center for the University of Bridgeport. Uh, that center had both graduate and undergraduate programs. And how many students did they have? Only about 350 at that branch. So just by coming to Meriden, you doubled your enrollment? Doubled my enrollment, just like that. (laughs) So how was that different from the Meriden Center? It was obviously a baccalaureate institution, four-year institution. Yes. Private. Yes. I find that the students um, at Middlesex Community College that attend the Meriden Center get much more student service support um, than other branch centers that I've worked for in the past. Um, The main campus is much more involved in the success of its satellite students. That's interesting because you would expect it to be, you'd expect the private institutions that charge lots of money to have more services. That's not the way it works? Not the case. Um, uh, Students students that I've worked with at other institutions, uh, branch campuses, and the University of Bridgeport was just one of a few, they typically have to go to the main campus for financial aid or to meet with a counselor or an advisor. And at Middlesex, we really try to bring all of those services right to the branch um, centers to help the students. So tell us a bit about your vision for the next three to five years. I definitely see the Meriden Center growing um, and us really helping our students be successful. And we define that you know, within our center as whatever the students' goals are when they start with us and however they may change as they go along, we want to help them succeed reaching those goals. So maybe it is um, their interest to transfer to a four-year school, so we'll give them the tools and the resources to help them do that. Some students just want to come in and take a couple of classes to feel like they're part of the college community or to update some skills or to finish a Update degree. skills like? Um, maybe they are unemployed or maybe they um, their career uh, has been, you know, has been sent overseas. So they come in to get some new job training skills or to maybe get some language skills. We have a lot of English second language students. So we just really sit down with each student and say, where do you want to go? How can we help you get there and help them with the tools? that they need to get there. So I see us continuing that along and we will really see where the community and the students need us the most. And as part of the community college system, we're able to adapt to that and fulfill that need. Now, obviously we're in a, you know, in a recession of some kind right now and hopefully we'll come out of it, but we're not out of it yet. Uh, A lot of people in, who are unemployed, a lot of people who are in less, lesser jobs than they really would like. Why should they bother to go to a, to a college at this point? They should go because there are so many different paths that we can help them take. Um, we work with other community organizations like the Connecticut Works Department that has resources for uh, job training or uh, changing career. We also work with the Meriden Chamber of Commerce to find out what the business needs are in the area so even if a student a potential student comes in and and they tell us what they're interested in if we don't have that program or we don't have a particular um, job path for them we do have a network of other people and agencies that we work with to help them get where they need to go so do you have a history where if someone is unemployed or they're unhappy in their job or they are part-time employed whatever Mm -hmm. uh, the if they take a course or two or three, they can move on to something else. Absolutely. Is, is there a history of that? There is, definitely. Um, a lot of our students come with an idea of uh, changing jobs or moving up in the job that we have. So we look at what they're doing, they talk with their employers, or they talk with uh, the labor department to see what's going on in the job force. They take a few classes, they get um, good grades, they get an updated skill set and they are able to apply for that promotion or they're able to uh, switch careers a little bit more easily. So they don't necessarily have to go for a degree? No, some students might just come in to take a 
a class in an introduction to counseling, let's say, and that may get them that entry level position in a human service organization or then they get their foot in the door and they come back to us maybe six months or a year later ready to take that next step. So when students come to talk to you for the very first time, mm -hmm. what's the most common question they ask? There are three. I'll tell you three. I can't really divide them up. You just do. Did. I have to <laughs> do I have to take any math? Um, they're concerned about the demographic of the students that they'll find in classes with them and they want to know how to pay for college. So our, what we do uh, in Meriden is we really sit down and we let the students talk and we listen um, before we advise them on any path they may want to take. Well, let's take those three questions. Do I have to take math? Not right away uh. is always my first <laughs> answer. Um, both adults and our younger students are typically very uh, worried about taking math in why, college. Why are people scared of math? I was scared of math, so I can tell you I just never did well in it. It gave me high anxiety, but um, so I can relate to those students very well. I eventually got through algebra. Um, we have support systems there to help them. I, a student who's math phobic, never encourage them to start off with that type of a class. We want to get them into a class where they will be successful and that they will enjoy it so they'll have a good experience. So what's the most elementary math that, that you offer? Oh, it's uh, number systems math and Which, it's really a refreshment of some high school math that they would have taken. Is that sort of a, a quarter plus a third equals yes. something or other? Yes, some arithmetic yeah. um, type things and we have online sources and once a student actually applies and is accepted to Middlesex they can utilize our tutors um, to brush up on some skills so even if it's before they've uh, enrolled in any classes but they've been accepted to the school they want to feel a little bit better about their skill level, they can utilize our tutors. So what we're saying to people who are scared of math is, A, it's okay to be scared. Yes. And other people are scared too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not going to be scared for long. Right. Uh, if you come to us. I think that's fair enough. Absolutely. Now, you talk about the demographics, the kinds of students. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? The age range? The... The, mostly the age range. Um, a which, lot is, of which is what? 18 to 60, off the top of my head. Um, we have adult students, which are referred to as non-traditional students, uh, in our day classes. And we have younger students right out of high school that are in our evening classes and vice versa. So we really have a very mixed group of students in most every class. That so if I looked in on a class, mm -hmm. I would find in most classes someone who's 18 or 19 mm -hmm. and someone who's in their 50s? Yes, and you would probably see some students um, that come from other cultural backgrounds that have language barriers. It's a very diverse group of students and so that makes learning th very good. And s Yeah, and so the third question is about money. Yes, and we talked a bit about financial aid. So what, what do you tell them? I tell them that 80%, almost 80% of our students receive some type of financial aid and that it doesn't hurt to fill out the free application for financial aid. Most importantly, it does not have anything to do with your credit history. <laughs> Well, that's important. Yes, for a lot of people that may not have a good credit rating, they uh, don't even want to bother with that. But now, now, if somebody's young, mm -hmm. uh, do you care what their parents' income is, or is that uh, are they independent of that? That uh, depends on the situation of the student. Um, if they live with their parents, if they're employed full time, if in their military, if they're a veteran, if they have any children. So we talk to each student on an individual basis. Well, it helps to be a veteran, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Um, veterans um, in the <clears throat> state of Connecticut, if they have what's called a DD-214 discharge paper, they uh, pay no tuition for the classes that they take here. And there are additional benefits, such as the GI Bill, and those uh, depend on what type of program you're in in the military. So let's give people your phone number again. Yes, it's 203-238-6202. 238 6202. And you, uh, Tammy, have, Tammy Christopher, I should give you your full name, yes. uh, have been director of the Meriden Center now for, for almost a Just year. Just about a year. And you have a wonderful staff over there. Uh, if someone who's listening is interested in taking a course this spring, 
They should call you right away they as soon should. as they hear your voice. They should. 203-238-6202. This has been Middlesex Moments, and my guest has been Tammy Christopher. Take a look at our website, mxcc.comnet, with two Ms, comnet.edu. I'm Jonathan Dowby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College. Have a good day. <laughs>